Good, eh? The three by six rectangle has a curious mathematical property. If you work out its area, it would be three times six, 18 units squared. If you work out its perimeter, that would be three plus six plus three plus six, that's 18 units. The area and the perimeter have the same numerical value. The same is true for the four by four square. The area here is four times four, 16 units squared, and its perimeter is four plus four plus four plus four, 16 units, the same numerical value. Wow. So what if there are any other rectangles with integer side lengths with area equal to perimeter, at least in numerical value? Can you find another one? Okay, let's hunt for rectangles with integer side lengths with the property that their area equals their perimeter in numerical value. So here's a general rectangle, side lengths a and b, hoping these are integers, and I want the area a, b to equal the perimeter. A plus A plus B plus B. So that's two A's plus two B's. So I'm looking for integer solutions to that equation right now. I okay, see I've got two unknowns that equation. Maybe I'll just solve for one of them. Maybe I'll solve for B. So let me subtract two B from both sides. A, B minus two B is two A. Uh, let me divide by A minus two. So B is two A over A minus two. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous right now because it looks like B wants to be a fraction. I, mean, I want A to be an integer and I want B to be an integer, but it looks like that's fractional. Okay, that makes me nervous. Um, okay, so right now, I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling a bit scared, but let me engage in some wishful thinking. If I really want this to be an integer, wouldn't it be nice if that top line was actually a multiple of the bottom line? In fact, it looks like it wants to be double the bottom line. In fact, wouldn't it be nice if there's a negative four there? Because that would then be, ah, oh, double the top line, the top line's double the bottom line, that's the integer too. That would be grand. So I've just engaged in wishful thinking, but I can't just willy nearly change the question that way. There's gonna be consequences. I'm gonna put a minus four on the top. I'd better counteract with a plus four as well. Okay, is that helpful? Well, that tells me that B is this number here, two plus four divided by A minus two. Okay, so at least B is an integer plus something else. Ah, all I have to do is make this an integer. Four divided by something needs to be an integer. That tells me what that bottom line needs to be. I can see right now, if we've got any hope of this working, we need, we need a minus two to be a factor of four. It could be four over one, it could be one. It could be four over two, it could be two. Four over four, it could be four, and that's it. In which case, a must be either three or four or six. Okay, a is three, four, or six. And if a actually is three, then the matching B would be two plus four over one, six. It'll be the three by six rectangle. We got that one. If A is four, I get uh, two plus four over two. B would be four in that case. Oh, we got that one. Okay, it looks like I'm getting a third example. If A is six, I'd get B would be two plus four over four, two plus one is three. I'll get the six by three rectangle, the 90 degree rotation of that one. Okay, but I think that establishes for sure there's actually only, essentially only two examples. These are the only two rectangles with integer side lengths with area equal perimeter, at least in numerical value. Wow. Why focus on integer rectangles? Consider this integer right triangle, for example, with side lengths 5, 12, and 13. Its area is half its base times its height. Yes, yes. Uh, half of 12 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30 units squared. And its perimeter is 5 plus 12. That's 17 plus 13. It's 30 units. The area and the perimeter, again, have the same numerical value. And of course, now I'm wondering, are there other integer right triangles with area equal to perimeter? Hmm. Of course, now we want to find all sorts of shapes with integer side lengths having area equal perimeter, at least a numerical value. For example, here's yet another one, this isosceles trapezoid. It has bases two and eight, has legs five and five, and check me, its area equals its perimeter in numerical value. But here's the thing, we can actually make this happen for any shape we like. We actually take any given shape, so here's a strange shape, or like that, 
great and good. Let's say its perimeter is currently P and its area is currently A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the shape. I'm going to scale it up by some scale factor K. So if K is a big number, I'll get a bigger version of the shape. Uh, something like, uh, hopefully that's good enough. All right, so I'll get a bigger version of the shape. But here's the thing. The perimeter of this new shape was scaled by factor K. P is a linear length, it scales by K. But area scales by the scale factor squared. The area of this new shape will be K squared times A. So the challenge now is, can I choose a good scale factor so for this new shape over here, its area equals its perimeter? And the answer is yes. I want its area, k squared a, to equal its perimeter, kp, at least a numerical value. Divide both sides by k, divide both sides by a. It tells me, please choose a scale factor given by the original perimeter divided by the original area. If you use that scale factor there, you are guaranteed to get a new shape with area equal perimeter. You can always make this happen. But of course, the snag is, you can make it happen, but you might not have integer side lengths. That's the snag. Keep the side lengths integers. Suddenly makes this a real challenge. There's actually something curious about three of our four examples so far. The four by four square. I can think of that as enclosing a circle that just touches all four sides. Uh, like that, there it goes. So the polygon circumscribes a circle and I see the radius of that circle is two. Now every triangle circumscribes a circle as well. So there is a circle that fits in here just touching all three sides. And here's an exercise for you. Convince me the radius of that circle is two. All right, here's an even harder challenge. Believe it or not, this isosceles trapezoid here actually has a circle that fits just inside it, touching all four sides. Convince me of that, and show me the reason that circle is two. Whoa, there is no circle that fits inside that rectangle right there, touching all four sides, but for three of our four polygons, they're actually polygons that circumscribe a circle of radius two, and they have area equal perimeter. Here's the thing. That's a property that's true for any polygon that circumscribes a circle of radius two. So let me show you right now why that's the case. So here goes, let me just clean the board briefly and draw an arbitrary polygon circumscribing a circle of radius two. So here's my circle of radius two. All right, beautiful, beautiful, grand and good. Here's one side, here's another side, here's a third side, here's a fourth side. I'll make it a five-sided one. The number of sides doesn't matter, as we're about to see, but let me label the side lengths A, B, C, D, and E. I'll have some radii. So a radius down here at 90 degrees to two, a radius over here at 90 degrees, two, a radius of two at 90 degrees, a radius of two at 90 degrees, and a radius of two at 90 degrees. I do remember learning from geometry that the radius and a tangent are always perpendicular to each other. Beautiful, I've got that picture right there. I claim Area equals perimeter in numerical value for that polygon I've drawn right there. Okay, here's why. Perimeter, let me do that one first, that's easy. Side length A plus side length B plus side length D plus side length E plus side length E. If I had more sides, this would be a longer formula. Okay, five, five is arbitrary here. Area, area, let's work at the area of this green polygon, but I'm gonna do it in a sneaky way. I'm actually gonna chop my polygon into triangles. So here's one triangle. I can see this triangle here has a base of A and a height of two. So the area is gonna be one half its base times its height. Ha ha ha. I'm gonna do it again over here. It's plus this area of this triangle, looking sideways, base of B, height of two. Half times base times two. I'll do it again for this triangle, but turn upside down, base of C, height of two, plus half C times two. Plus this triangle, whoop, there it is, base of D, height of two, half, base times height, plus the final triangle here, which I've got there right now, base of E, height of two, half base times height. And here's the thing, I chose a radius of two, and all these cancel out, whoa, 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 and what we're left with for the area, A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Area equals perimeter in numerical value. For this polygon, this is circumscribes a circle of radius two. In fact, only a radius of two. If I didn't choose two here, I would not have, any, would not have a area equal perimeter. Has to be a radius of two for this to work. Wow.
Okay, here's a question. Suppose you have a regular polygon with n sides, and we want to arrange matters so that area equals perimeter, at least in numerical value. What must the side length of that regular polygon be? All right, so let me draw a regular polygon. I'll draw one with just six sides. I'll choose n equals six, but I'm going to really think more generally here. There's any number of sides, n sides. Uh, I'll call the side length s, and we want the area to equal the perimeter of that shape. Now, here's the thing about regular polygons. Every regular polygon has an inscribed circle. So we definitely draw a circle here that touches all n sides. There it is. And if we want area to equal to perimeter, we know the radius of that circle has to be 2. Has to be a circle of radius 2. And I bet that's now enough information for us to work out what that side length has to be. And I'm going to do it as follows. I'm actually going to draw a little uh, spoke here like this to make a right triangle. That means I guess I've cut the base into two parts, S over 2 and S over 2. So I'm going to focus on this little right triangle here. I'll draw it over here for fun. Height of 2, base of S over 2. And I bet I know some angles in that triangle. For example, since this has n sides, let me draw in all the spokes. I can see with n sides, I'm actually chopping a full 360 degrees into n parts, which means one of these parts here must have an angle inside of 360 divided by n. OK, and I took one of these angles, 360 divided by n, and chopped it in half to get this little part up here. So this angle must be half of 360 over n. That's 180 degrees over n. All right, now I've got a right triangle, I've got an angle in it, and it looks like I want to do some trigonometry here, if it makes, I'm thinking of the tangent function. So I can see right now that the tangent of 180 over n would be s over 2, s over 2, divided by another 2. So that's s over 4. s over 4 is tangent of that stuff. So that means s all by itself is 4 times the tangent of 180 degrees divided by n. There is a formula for the side length of a regular polygon with n sides having the property that area and perimeter have the same numerical value. Whoa, okay. Um, okay, let me just test this formula. Let me actually test it for the case n equals 4, a regular 4 gone. Most people call that a square. In which case, what would the side length have to be? Well, the side length has to be 4 times the tangent of 180 degrees divided by 4. That's 45 degrees, I believe. Tangent of 45 degrees is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Yes, the regular 4 gone, the square, would have a side length of 4, just as we saw before. Now, here's a deep question. Uh, is this the only value of n that gives an integer side length? Whoa! Is this the only value of n that gives a rational number for the side length? Whoa! So it's become very deep. Okay, there's a deep question right there. But here's another way you think about this. I mean, I had to draw a picture of a polygon with six sides circumscribing that circle of radius 2. Um, I could have drawn a picture with 20 sides, a polygon with 20 sides circumscribing that circle. And it would kind of look like this. Here you go, circle of radius 2, and with 20 sides, a regular polygon with 20 sides will kind of look like this. So 7, 8, 9, 10, no, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10. Okay, looking very circle-like. In fact, if I drew a regular polygon with 2 billion sides, uh, so I'm describing that circle, it'll be so circle-like that I bet the human eye couldn't tell the difference. All right. In fact, let me draw a genuine circle of radius 2, because it has its own amazing property. If I draw an actual circle of radius 2, in some sense let n go to infinity in this whole consideration, I'll get an actual circle of radius 2, and look what happens. Look at its area, look at its perimeter. Well, I guess most people now call that circumference. Area is pi r squared. If r is 2, pi times 4, the area is 4 pi units squared. Perimeter is normally 2 pi r. If r is 2, 2 times 2 is 4 times pi, I get 4 pi units. Ah, the actual circle itself has area and perimeter with the same numerical value. Whoa, so in some sense I feel like I've come full circle. This is kind of cool.